Hi, my name is Tom Dick. I'm a math advisor for Texas Instruments. This short video is part of the TI and Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to take a look at the mean value theorem for integrals using the TI-84. The function you see in Y1 is the rate at which fish are leaving a lake. This scenario appeared on question 1 on both the AB and BC exams in 2019. We're interested in finding the average value of this function over the time interval 0 to 5. So I'm going to my graphing window and setting x min and x max to the 0 and 5 time limits. Now we'll go ahead and graph this and take a look at our function. So here's the graph. Now we're interested in finding the average value of these function values. To do that we're going to need to compute a definite integral and then divide by the length of the interval over which that integral is defined. So let's go to our calculation screen and take care of that. First of all, let's take care of the division by the length of the interval. So I'm going to multiply by 1 divided by my x max minus x min. Now I can find those variables under window in the vars menu. So there's x max and then we'll subtract x min so I go back to the variables menu. There we go. And that's taking care of our division by the length of the interval. Now we're going to get our definite integral. And so I'm going back to get my x min and x max because they are also the bounds on my definite integral. So x min is a lower limit and x max will be our upper limit. There we go, and we'll just be integrating y1. That's where our rate function is. So I'll pull that from my y variables menu. And finally, we're integrating with respect to x. Now I want to store this value away, and this is the average value. So I'm going to store this in m for mean. Let's do the calculation and see what we get. So here we have the average value of that function over the time interval 0 to 5. Now what I'd like to do next is actually graph the constant function that has that same average value. So notice that the definite integral of my constant function is simply going to be given by the height above the x-axis that that horizontal line is times the length of the interval. And that's giving us the same definite integral as our original function. Now here's a spot where the horizontal line crosses my original function graph. Let's calculate that intersection point. Alright, here we go, and we can see, let's see, we'll need to select our two curves. There we go, and now we'll calculate the intersection point, and there it is. So at time 3.228 approximately, that's where our function value is equal to the mean value. Now that's basically the conclusion of the mean value theorem. If you have a continuous function, there's at least one spot between the ends of the interval where the function value exactly equals the average value. Now I want to go back and look at a different function now. Let's look at a simple function. How about just 2 minus x squared? And we'll illustrate this mean value theorem again. Uh, first of all, we'll need to recalculate. Let's see, let's make our interval from, say, negative 2 to 3. So that'll be our interval of integration. And so I'm interested in the average value of this function over that interval. So first of all, let's recalculate the average value by going back to the calculation screen. And what we can do is simply do a last entry that's going to echo back that same integral calculation, but because x min, x max, and y1 have all been updated, we have a new average value. And we can see that it's equal to negative one-third. I've gone ahead and graphed both my function y1 and the constant mean value. That mean value is negative one-third 
and we can see there's a couple of spots where our original function is exactly equal to its average value over that interval. Again, that's the conclusion of the mean value theorem for integrals. Let's try another example. Uh, how about sine x? So I've gone back to the y1 and we'll put in sine x for y1. Now before we graph, I'd like to recalculate the average value. Let's see, the interval we're going to use this time is let's do a full period. So we're going to go from negative pi to positive pi. So I've entered negative pi for my x min, positive pi for my x max. Uh, let's get a little better y scaling here. Well, let's see, sine will range from negative 1 to 1, so I'll use that as my y min and y max. Now, before I graph, I want to recalculate that average value. So I've gone back to the calculator screen. I've echoed back my mean value computation, and I got a mean value of 0. Does that really make sense? Well, actually, when we look at the graph, it makes perfect sense since we've got a definite integral of our original function is canceled out to give us zero. And there certainly is a spot where the curve crosses y equals zero. Now, the next example we're going to look at is an important one. Uh, this is a greatest integer function, abbreviated int of x. Uh, as usual, I'm going to want to, let's see, let's do a window of uh, x min, negative 1, and x max of 3. And I'll adjust my y min to be from negative 1 to, let's say, 4. Okay. Now, the greatest integer function is a step function, and it's not continuous. Let's see what happens. First, well, let's recalculate the average value. We calculate the average value, get 0 0.5 or 1 half. Let's check out the graph. Uh, there's our step function. This is actually very easy to find the definite integral for. There's a contribution of negative 1, positive 1 cancels, and so we're left with a total definite integral of positive 2 divided by the length of our interval, which is 4, and that's why we get an average value of 1 half but our curve never crosses that line because it's discontinuous. So for the conclusion of the mean value theorem to hold, we have to satisfy that continuity necessary condition. Well, that winds up this short video. For more resources like these, please see education.ti.com.